It's time for Xian Yun. Xian Yun. Xian Yun. Can we just stick with Claude Retainer? <laughs> so she is level 70 now. However, I have actually changed my raising mode standards to be actually max level. I do this honestly because it just makes sense. Raising modes were always meant to be a sort of free to play showcase, but being free to play doesn't limit your characters to 70 or their talents to six. But most likely in the future for God modes, I will at least get the first one or two constellations if they are good. As for talents and talent priority, there is one thing where actually gonna have to test out later so I can't say for certain I'm pretty sure normal attack won't be important to raise even if the drift cloud wave damage that is considered plunging attack damage relies on the plunging multipliers but I'm assuming right now it actually just relies on the drift cloud wave damage multipliers here I always like to make totally sure of these things so we're gonna check that out later but for now I'm just gonna get her skill and ultimate up to eight but now that we've used our resources let's go ahead and do the good old talent and constellation overview she definitely has one of the prettiest basic slash charge attacks in the game in my opinion. Also being an Animo Catalyst user, these are Animo attacks. She does have a pretty standard plunge when you just jump off the ledge, but she has another more special plunge attack via her elemental skill. So let's talk about that now. Basically, she can jump up to three times. And then there are a few things that can happen once she's at the climax of her jumps. You can do nothing and she'll fall. She won't take fall damage because she's immune to it. You can open up your glider and glide some distance. With her exploration passive, she increases your glide speed by 15%, or you can press the attack button at any point while she's falling to do a drift cloud wave, which is basically a plunge attack. But if there's a target nearby, she'll actually aim for that target and crash into them. But yeah, outside of some really interesting exploration utility, it doesn't do much besides damage. Her burst, however, is where the majority of her actual utility comes in. Just from a healing standpoint, it's actually pretty amazing. She starts off with a big party-wide burst heal, scaling with her attack. And then for the next 16 seconds, she will also continually heal the entire party with a healing ring that follows the active character. That's already really, really great, especially with all the Farinas running around. I'm sorry, Baiju, but she's most likely gonna be taking your place. Because besides the really good team-wide healing, she also imbues a special buff on the active character. This will increase their jump height enough to do plunge attacks. And you start with eight of these stacks, so you can do eight plunge attacks. This of course does pair nicely with her two passive abilities. The first one increasing the crit rate of plunging attacks by up to 10%. And you get this up to 10 crit rate by hitting enemies with Cloud Retainer's Drift Cloud Waves. Her second passive increases plunge damage in a different way. Basically after Xian Yun uses her burst, giving this buff to everyone that makes them jump higher and can do plunge attacks, the shockwave damage of those plunge attacks will be increased by 200% of her attack, up to a bonus damage of 9,000. That means to max out this bonus, she would need to have 4,500 attack, which is a pretty big ask, but we'll see how close we can get and if it's even worth trying to max out. Assuming this 9,000 damage works like Song of Days Past, where it's not just a flat increase of 9,000, I imagine that can be a pretty significant damage increase. Looking at constellations, C1 pretty simple. We get an extra charge for White Clouds at Dawn, her E. This should make not only getting the crit rate from her first passive a lot easier, but also extra E charges are just really good for energy regeneration as well. I think it's a very good C1. C2 is a self buff, 20% attack for 15 seconds when using E and a buff to her second passive, the one that increases plunge shockwave damage. Basically, this buff will get doubled. It'll be up to 400% of her attack and with a maximum cap of 18,000 damage. So you don't need any extra attack to take advantage of this. It'll really just double this bonus damage. Everything else stays the same. C3 buffs her ultimate, which is definitely what I would like to see at C3. I just think talent levels for her burst are a lot more important. C4 is pretty interesting. It actually attaches a team white heal on her elemental skill. This does depend on how many times you actually jump with E before doing the plunge attack, with one jump netting you 50% of her attack as a team white heal, with three jumps netting you 150% of her attack as a team white heal. The only reason I would ever do a one jump and then plunge is to save a bit of time on rotation. Other than that, there's no benefit to only jumping once. C5, of course, is three talent levels for her elemental skill, which I think is actually good since it's right before C6, which hugely buffs her elemental skill damage. Her C6 sounds absolutely wild. Not only will the crit damage of her elemental skill be increased by 70% if you do the three jumps and then plunge, but after doing burst, you have 16 seconds where you can do eight elemental skills in a row without going on cooldown. That sounds kind of crazy to me. I will have some footage playing here after I get her to C6. I'm not sure I'd be able to get off eight three jump plunges in 16 seconds, 
but those are the ones with 70% crit damage. Otherwise you're only getting 15 or 35% crit damage. But yeah, she definitely has like main DPS potential at C6, almost just like a Shao with extra steps, quite literally. But yeah, at the time of voiceover, I have not experienced C6 yet, uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. I also just realized since she by herself jumps high enough to, to uh, pull out your glider, you can do this. <laughs> but yeah, there's Sien Yun, very, very interesting character. So with what we've learned, we can make an informed decision on how to build her. As for weapon, especially at C0, I would not bother with trying to make her do some cool damage or whatever. I would purely focus on her healing slash support abilities, which basically means just trying to stack a bunch of attack. If you have Skyward Atlas, I think this would be a really good book. A lot of base attack and then attack substat here. I feel like we could give her Skyward Atlas and it'd be fair enough since it's a super old standard banner OG weapon but I do usually like to stick with four stars. And since we will be stacking so much attack via artifacts and substats, if we can get them, a high base attack is going to be even more important than an attack percent substat. Her own signature weapon having the highest base attack in the game for a catalyst anyway. I was just gonna go for Oath Sworn Eye. I think this would be a very good four star option for her. But as far as I remember, it's a pretty old event weapon. So I doubt that many people have it. If you don't over here in the Fontaine Blacksmith, there is Flowing Purity, which also has the highest four star base attack along alongside Oathsworn Eye and attack percent substat. It being craftable makes it very FTP friendly, but yeah, since I eventually plan to get her signature, we're just going to go with Oathsworn Eye for today. <laughs> As for artifacts, I've really been considering Song of Days Past since I somewhat recently tested it, and it's actually pretty good, and it buffs everything, including plunging attacks. And the fact per yearning effect it can only happen five times is honestly kind of a good thing since plunges are typically a pretty slow attack. If you want more context to how this set works, I recommend checking out that video. Of course, being an animal character, there's always the question, what about Viridescent? Honestly, I don't really know yet. We will try some infusers, see how it works. Otherwise, we'll have to wait and see. For now, I'm gonna give her Song of Days Past. We haven't farmed it a ton. We don't have insanely good pieces or anything. We have one here with some attack and some energy recharge. I think that's generally okay. I am primarily just looking for attack percent substats. I wanna stack as much attack as possible on her. We have a couple here with attack percent substat. We'll roll them both and see how it goes. This one, we did get a couple rolls. We have 15% attack here, and this one didn't roll into attack at all. So pretty obvious which one we're going for here. No attack stands, which is very sad. One attack goblet, thank God. Do we have an attack circlet? Yes, we do. Oh my God, that was close. They're both really bad, but at the end of the day, the main stat's the most important. And so we can just go off piece for the sands. Some more energy recharge wouldn't hurt. I'm just gonna steal this one off of Mika. So with Oath Sworn Eye in these artifacts I just gave her, basically triple attack. We're already sitting at nearly 3,300 attack, about 1,200 shy of fully maxing out her passive here. Point is, even with a four star weapon and pretty mediocre substats on Plume and Flower, we are like not so far away, which is good. Little low on HP at around 20K. Not much crit at all, and then uh, 147 energy recharge. Her burst isn't that expensive at 70, so we'll see if that's enough. Starting with the plunge test and if her normal attack skill matters here. So here's the fifth plunge here, and uh, five times in a row we got 8,002, so very consistent. Now we're just gonna get her basic up to eight, and if we see another 8,002, then it obviously doesn't do anything for this plunge attack. 8,002. I did figure that was the case because Drift Cloud Wave has its own multipliers. I guess that's all to say, you don't need to raise her basic. So talking about teams, this is the one I kind of want to try first. I know it might seem a little wacky, but we just got Freena there for some damage boost, Binny for the thousand attack, Sian Yun of course, and then Shao, which I know can plunge on his own. But the point of Sian Yun is I guess also to buff plunge attacks. We will also try with Diluc or whatever because he has the highest plunge multiplier in the game. Let's mess around in the new area. Can take a look at a bit of, of her exploration abilities as well. What in God's name just happened? Oh my God. All right. <laughs> anyway, hopefully we can come across some enemies somewhere. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you are forced into a story. All right, to Abyss we go. <laughs> oh yeah, my shower isn't really built yet. I do kind of want to, oh, okay, never mind. We can try the custom loadout. It doesn't take anything into context though. It gives me 82 crit rate with the hunter set. I'm just gonna do it manually. Yeah, pretty sure I made a better shot without even trying, but I digress. Yeah, I'm just gonna do what feels right, I suppose, and uh, we'll see what happens. So we're gonna start with our burst, then we'll do like a triple jump E plunge thing. Here we go, here's some plunges. Ooh, 98. We could have broken 100. We could have broken 100k plunge. Are we getting like, uh, oh, he's already into his disabled phase. That's crazy. 
Okay, that was actually really good. I'm gonna retry. Yeah, pretty sure I've never been able to do 100k with my Xiao. 95, 96, 93, Benny's boost is gone. Let me try and just do her burst and Xiao and uh, kind, of, kind of see what's going on there. There are, there are definitely two numbers popping up, a 917. I'm curious to see what uh, Xiao is doing without her buff, to be honest. Uh, so now we are getting like 47k criticals, 51. It goes a little bit higher um, with her buff currently. So about 55 there. And if we just skip her and go to Xiao, what are we getting then? Oh my God, she's doing a lot. Uh, 25, 29, she's almost doubling his damage, 30K. Okay, Jesus. I'm pretty sure that's purely her second passives doing this 9,000 damage. Also that tiny damage we, we were seeing was actually this Star Wicker damage. That does kind of beg the question though, like if we were to really nuke her base attack by giving her an apprentice notes, for example, and taking off her attack percent goblets. Oh, we also have Song of Days pass proccing though because we're doing her ultimate which heals and triggers this. It does take six seconds though, and I think we're at least getting those first few plunges off faster than that. So yeah, she has eight, 862 attack now. I'm really just trying to see if there's a huge difference because she has so little attack now. Oh uh, yeah, there is still. Now we're getting like 34k I saw. Even in this one later on, it's still 36 which is definitely still a good amount higher than his totally unbuffed self, but so much lower than when she actually has good attack. So yeah, as I suspected, it is pretty important to try and get her attack pretty high. It makes a very big difference. I guess we should also be trying to do at least a drift cloud wave against perpetual, a single target. We'd only get four crit rate. I don't know if it's really worth it, honestly. One other peculiar thing is that it says the extra damage can only be inflicted to a single opponent. I want to see how that looks. So if we like hit a group of enemies with a Shao plunge, uh, is only one of them going to receive a lot of damage? I mean, these two pyro slimes should be enough to see it at least. We're just going to do her ultimate real quick. Go to Shao's ultimate and do a good old plunge. Uh, oh yeah, one, one hit for 50, one hit for 27. Generally the hardest content is single target anyway, so it is still a really powerful boost. And also I would like to see her healing capabilities while we're here. We're gonna try and get everyone a little bit hurt. Whoa, I don't think that was supposed to happen. <laughs> but all right, here we go. Okay, Benny is seeming decently healthy now. It, it's actually not as big of a burst heal as I thought, but then for the next 16 seconds, every second, dude, everyone's full health. Whoops, wrong button. Everyone's full health again. Like Farina was half dead. So even if it wasn't for the plunge boost, which again is an incredible buff, she's still a really good healer. That being said, of course we gotta try someone who doesn't normally plunge attack, and that is obviously D Luke. I don't like D Luke. He's like the one character I've publicly said I don't really care for and i bought his outfit <laughs> his outfit is really cool i really wish they would release some more like dynamic ones that actually do something but okay i'll give him my r5 gravestone very free to play and it matches his outfit really nice since we might keep freeing in the team i We'll probably just give him Shao's set, minus the Animo Goblet. I mean, he's got a nice and square 3000 attack, not insane crit stats or anything, but like he does have Gravestone. We're just gonna do the full rotation again here. Sure, let's start with his burst just for fun here. All right, whoa, 147? Wait a second, 150? What's going on there, pal, buddy? What the hell? Maybe I should give her Veer Destin, but I'm not sure. Nothing else, we're just gonna go for it, 139. Deal is meta now. <laughs> Probably not, maybe? Shao the Plunger wasn't even breaking 100k. So that means we could do like Vaporize. Maybe that's what we're doing. Holy hell, I think this is actually a really good team. <laughs> I'm having a hard time actually spotting the Vaporize text though, so it's a little annoying. Okay, yeah. Those uh, 150Ks are definitely Vaporize, I see it now. I guess to sort of get a reference number, we're gonna swap out Cloud Retainer with Zhongli and just jump off his pillar and do a plunge. Hopefully with the same setup, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we hit for a 99. 
That's really annoying to set up, so we're just gonna run with that. I mean, a 100k plunge is still really impressive, but uh, you have to climb up a jungly pillar for that <laughs> instead of just jumping. Uh, so that's like the main thing there. So even though I do still think Song of Days Past is a good set for her, I think she would max it out every six seconds and she's healing pretty much constantly if you can keep her burst up. Viridescent, of course, is definitely a real option. I mean, of course it does depend. Like if you are, you know, taking Shao as your DPS to do, you know, stronger plunges, Viridescent's not gonna do much, obviously. So with that being said, we are actually going to put her in Viridescent and try that Diluc run again. I assume since she is doing Animo damage with every plunge, one of them will swirl with the Pyro, hopefully. All right, here we go. We're going to uh, just do the general rotation. Honestly, since we have Benny here, that might be enough. Oh, he went up into the air. That should have hopefully swirled already. So here we go. We're just going to start it, start it up. Oh, 147. I don't know. 139. I have to imagine we're not actually swirling the pyro. 183. Okay. We deliberately swirled the pyro this time. It's just in this team in particular, I don't think we're able to consistently swirl it without doing it deliberately and wasting a bunch of time. It's really hard to get the hydro off of him once Farina's minions start going. 170. Okay. But yeah, it's pretty cumbersome to do it like that. 178. 102. Benny buff is gone because I start with that to swirl the pyro. I tried swirling it with Deluxe pyro, but then by the time I actually go back to do Benny's burst, the swirl buff is gone. So yeah, it's kind of annoying. Well, I would say if you're easily able to swirl the element, then Viridescent is definitely an option. In this specific team, it doesn't seem to be working out very easily. It's pretty annoying and like half the buffs are gone by like the third plunge. So it's just overall not worth it in my case. I would have to do a lot more thinking to try and patch that up. But honestly, I'm I'm perfectly happy with my 150k plunges from Diluc anyway. But since raising modes are more just about learning the character, I think we did a little bit more than that today, but whatever. I really like her, she's really fun. If I'm gonna be totally honest though, I did think her triple jump thing would be cooler than it is. It's still cool, don't get me wrong. Like we just closed that gap there. That was, that was pretty nice. We can probably do it with gliding also, you know, almost. Pretty much. I mean, we definitely get there faster, that's for sure. I don't know what I was expecting, like literally just flying through the air. <laughs> that would have been very un-Genshin like, but I, I, I don't know. I guess I expected too much. It's still cool. And especially the fact we can use it with this thing, just from the ground, I think can make getting certain like oculi a lot easier in some spots. I'd say she's easily S plus for exploration and healing. Like that's something that can't really be stated enough. She is an incredible healer. I mean, I'm just gonna take another look at that real quick. Like 6,500 burst heal team wide to start. And then we're healing for, what is that every second? The entire team, 3,000, the entire team. Whoa, I didn't know this dude did, d does a Mario Rubik's cube. I don't think I've ever seen that move from this guy. What the hell? I, I, do, do I always just kill him too fast? <laughs> anyway, after spending over four hours with her, I hope I can turn this into something watchable and not too long. Let me know what you think about her in the comments down below though. Dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks. As always for watching and until next time. Is it in? 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 In